The Aftorah of Nasai talks about the birth of Shimshay Nagibor, Samson, the mighty. And the Haftarah of Nasai, which talks about this story, needs to be connected to the Pasha, because the Haftarah always is connected to the theme of the Pasha. But being that Nasai is read after Shavuos, there needs to be a connection to the holiday of Shavuos as well. To begin with the Haftorah of Nasai, we find over here that the mother of Shimshon could not give birth. She was barren. And the angel appears to her and says, even though you are barren, you are going to give birth to a child. However, this child should be a Nazir, which means he should not drink wine or cut his hair. <clears throat> now, this is the connection to the Parsha. Because in the Parsha of Nasai, we talk about the mitzvah of the Nazirite. Both a man or a woman have the right to become a Nazir. The minimal time of a Nazir is 30 days. The Nazir, however, could be a Nazir Olam, an eternal Nazir. And that means that every year you can cut your hair once a year. However, Shimshoin was unique, and that is he was never allowed to cut his hair. So that is not the normal type of Nazir, but this was a decree from heaven that he should be a Nazir that will never be able to cut his hair. And we know that the power of Shimshon was in his hair. The angel appeared to the wife of Manoach. What was her name? Her name was Hatzlal Poini. That's what the Medrash says. Her name was Hatzlal Poini, which means she turned towards an angel. Poni means ponit, to turn, and, and uh, Hatzlal is the angel. So she turned towards the angel. Why did the angel come to her? Anatom Noach, the Medrash says that there was an argument between husband and wife. Haslaponis said that the reason she's not giving birth to a child is because Menoyach is sterile. Menoyach said that the reason his wife is not having a child is because she's barren. She can't conceive. And this was the argument that was going on for years. The angel appears to her and tells her, in truth, it's you. You are the one that is barren. However, a miracle will take place because of your modesty and also because of Menoach's righteousness that you will give birth to the Savior of Israel, to Shimshon. The Torah goes on to say that he will be a Nazir. Why? Because the angel decreed that he is not to cut his hair or drink wine. And certainly not to eat food that is tummy that is not holy. Or food that is defiled. He is prohibited from eating. There's a question, however, that Ammon tells us that the only way you can become a Nazir is if you say yourself to become a Nazir. I want to become a Nazir. But an angel cannot decree that a person should become a Nazir. So how is it possible that Shimshon was a Nazir because the angel decreed that he should be a Nazir? And the answer is that this is similar to a young convert, a child, under the age of Bar Mitzvah, whose father converts together with him, or he is adopted by Jewish parents, and the parents want to convert that child to become Jewish. So the Bez Din takes the child, they circumcise him, and they put the child into the mikveh, and the child is now a Jew. Comes the question to mind, he's not bar mitzvah. In other words, only a bar mitzvah boy can become a convert, because you have to accept upon yourself the laws of the Torah. You can't be forced to accept the laws of the Torah. So how then can we convert someone who is a child? And we know the halacha is that 
at the age of 13, the child is asked, do you want to remain Jewish or not? If the child says, no, this is not for me, I'll be a Noahide, I'll follow the seven Noahide commandments, but I don't want to follow 613, that's too much for me, then he's no longer Jewish. So what happened over here? On one hand, he went through the formalities, he went through the action. On the other hand, he turns 13 and he's no longer Jewish. So there's two things. There's the masa, the action, and there's the kedusha, the holiness. The action, which is the formalities, the circumcision, the immersion in the mikvah, this is the action of the convert. And this could be done by the Bezdin. However, the holiness of becoming Jewish, this takes place at 13. And therefore, if the child agrees to continue, he now becomes holy, and retroactively, he was Jewish. If the child at 13 says, no, I don't want it, at that moment, the actions that were done become nullified, and he does not assume that level of holiness. The same is true with Shimshin. Until the age of 13, he did not accept the concept of the Nazirite. It was placed upon him by the angel, and his mother and father raised him in that manner. However, once he assumed the age of Bar Mitzvah, he became a man, and now he needed to make his own choices. He accepted upon himself this role of being a Nazir. The Haftorah goes on to say that Menoach looked at the angel, and he thought the angel was a prophet because the angel came in the disguise of a human being. He offered him to come over and eat. The angel said, no, thank you. If you want, you could bring a sacrifice. He brought a sacrifice, and as the flames were going up, the angel entered into the fire, and he went up in that flame. There's an interesting story that the Shpala Zedah, who was a colleague of the Alter Rebbe, told the Alter Rebbe that he knows that the Alter Rebbe wrote a book called Sefer Shal Tzadikim. In other words, in addition to the Tanya that is famous and world-renowned, which is known as the Sefer Shal Beninim, the book of the intermediary, because everybody, every person, can become a Benini. A Benini means that you have no sin, each person can reach that level of a bain, intermediate person. A tzaddik, on the, on the other hand, is someone that despises sin. Not everybody could despise sin. But, but each person can discipline themselves to a degree that they do not have any sin. This is called the Sefer Shobainim, the book of the intermediary. This is the book of the Tanya. The Alter Rebbe wrote another book called Sefer Shal Tzadikim the book of the righteous. However, it was too high for the world to conceive, and therefore it was decreed in heaven that it would go up in flames. The Shpala Zayda told the Alter Rebbe, I'm aware that you wrote the book Sefer Shal Tzadikim. However, it's going to go up in flames. However, he is asking of heaven that when that book goes up, he will go up together with that flame to heaven. And that's what happened. When the burned... When the book burned, at that time, the Shpala Zayda, even though he was in a different city, he died at that moment. He went up together with the flame of the Sefer Shel Tzadikim. And this is the word he used, Belahav, with this flame, I want to go up. After Menoyach saw the angel and realized he was an angel, he told his wife, uh-oh, I'm afraid we are going to die. Menoyach was under the impression that no man can see God and die and live. Now this is true for God. An angel of God is different. His wife now gives three reasons why you are not going to die. What does she say? 
She says like this. And his wife told him, Lu Hashem If God wanted to kill us, number one, Number one, he would never accept our sacrifice. Number two, was He would not allow us to see the angel go up in the flames that we saw with our own eyes. And number three. And number three, he would not have told us such good news that we are going to give birth to a child. These are the three arguments that she made. Why three arguments? And first of all, or second of all rather, it's out of order. The first thing was the angel gave her the good news. The second thing is, God accepted the sacrifice. The third thing was that the angel went up together in the flame. Why does he change the order? Now, the idea of dying, in essence, she should have argued and said, look, how can we die if God promised us a child? That should have been the strongest argument. Why did she have to give three arguments? So to this, the answer is that theoretically, Menoyach could have impregnated her that night and died the next morning. And she could have died, God forbid, at childbirth. So there could have been this concept of death. So the answer that the wife of Menoyach is giving him is not only that we're not going to die today or within the year, but we're going to live a long, happy, healthy life. And she begins, as we say, minakal elakovit, from a lower argument to a stronger argument. The first argument is, look, God accepted our sacrifice. We all know the story of Cain and Abel. They both brought sacrifices. Cain, however, was not accepted, and the sacrifice of Abel was accepted. So if God did not like them, God would not accept their sacrifice. That's her first argument. The second argument is he would not allow us to see this incredible miracle of this angel in the guise of a human entering into the fire and going up in that flame. Number three, even more than that, we heard good news. What does that mean? Let's expound on this for a moment. We began earlier that the Haftarah of Nasai is not only connected to the Parsha, which talks about the mitzvah of becoming a nazir, but also needs to be connected to the holiday of Shavuos. What happened on Shavuos? One of the miracles that took place on Shavuos is that we say, the Gemara tells us, Rain is anishma v'shoimin is anire. They saw that which is readily heard, and they heard that which was readily seen. What does that mean? They saw the thunder, and they heard the lightning. Now, that's a beautiful miracle. But why is that important? God does not make miracles for no reason. Every miracle is integral to the entire theme. So what was the miracle here that the Gemara needs to expound on? You should know, by the way, they even saw the thunder, and they even heard the lightning. And the answer is, the Rebbe gives a beautiful, incredible insight to this, and that is normally a person sees something physical. That's what we see. We hear something more spiritual, like radio waves. And seeing is believing. It's in front of me. If I see a spaceship landing in my backyard, seeing is believing. Hearing, we can argue today this way, tomorrow I can change my mind. So when you see something, it makes an indelible impression upon you. Hearing, again, could be inspiring, it could be impressive, but at the end of the day, I can change my mind.
What was the miracle of Matan Torah? What was the miracle of Shavuot? What was the miracle that took place on the mountain? That the entire Jewish people, three million Jews, men, women, and children, saw that which was readily heard. They saw spirituality. That became real. That became front and center. That became unindelible. That was in their minds. It can never be erased. What was secondary, what they heard, was the lightning, was the physical, the earth, the material. That became secondary to them. So there were two things here. God, spirituality, was number one. Earth, material, number two. And this is the same point that the wife of Manoach makes to Manoach. This is the same point that Slopoini tells her husband. You should know. Not only did God accept our sacrifice, but we saw the angel go up in the fire. We saw spirituality. That became our front and center. That became our essence. And the earth now became secondary. And we also heard the news. Now, this is also two levels. There are people who are materialistic and even perhaps very physical and corporeal and maybe even hedonistic that could sense spirituality. But that doesn't change them. They remain very materialistic. The point of the Aftora is not only did they experience spirituality and did they see spirituality, but the physical and the material became to them secondary. They were moved. They were transformed. And this is really what Shavuos is all about. It's not only the giving of the Torah and knowing that God chose us from all the nations of the world. And at Sinai, God also gave the Noahide laws to all the nations of the world. It's not only believing in God and becoming more spiritual, but also that the material becomes secondary. And this is the, the message of the Haftorah here. The idea of becoming a Nazar to begin with is when a person becomes addicted to too much wine and too much materialism, they decide to become a Nazir so that they remove themselves from the material and become more spiritual. And this is the, the inspiration, and this is the, the encouragement of the holiday of Shavuos, that we take upon ourselves new resolutions to study more Torah, to pray more, to give more charity, to do more mitzvahs, to become a little more spiritual and perhaps a bit less, a bit less materialistic. It's interesting that the holiday of Shavuos is only one day in Israel and two days in, in the diaspora, yet it's one of the three major holidays. So Sukkis is a full week, seven, eight days. Pesach, also seven, eight days. When it comes to Shavuot, it's only one day or two days. So one of the, the explanations is that Shavuos is like going to a market. And in a day or two, you buy everything. But before you go back to town to sell all of these items, you have to pack up. You have to separate the items you bought, and you put each item into their proper category, and then you put it into, into bags, and you put it into the suitcase, and then you load it up onto the camel or into the car, into the SUV, and then you, you drive back to your town. Shavuos is, is two days, but it's very, very compact. And it's a time of tremendous, intense joy, learning, prayer, and, and transformation. After Shavuos, we have an additional week, which is called the day of Yimei HaShlumim, that, that we don't say Tachnun in the, the daily prayers. We don't say prayers of penitence, because it's still really a Yom Tif. It's still a holiday till the 12th day of the month. In the time of the Beis Amikdash, the, the people that came up to the pilgrimage would continue to bring sacrifices the entire week. So the first two days, we go into the market. The rest of the week, we begin to pack up all the ideas that we learned, all the resolutions that we made, and we think about it, we internalize it. And if, for some reason, we forgot to make this resolution, or we forgot to eat the cheesecake, now is the time to make up. We could do tshuva. 
You can have the blintz, you can have the cheesecake, and spiritually you can make this new resolution to, to learn more Torah for the year to come. The story is told that the, the secretary of the previous Lubavitcher Rebbe, Rabchanya Merozov, a few days after Shavuot, he saw that the Fidik Rebbe wasn't himself. He was like somewhere else. And he went over to the Rebbe and he said to him, to the Rebbe Rayat, Rabbi Yishev Yitzchak, he said, Rebbe, are you okay? Because you don't seem to be yourself. And the Rebbe, with a very sincere and, and firm face, told him, what could I do? I have not yet come down from the mountain. So Shavuos is the day we go on to the mountain. And we connect, and we make resolutions, and we do tshuva for the entire year of opportunities missed to the study of Torah. But we have a right to stay on the mountain a few more days. And we allow it to resonate and to, and to percolate. And then we come back down from the mountain, and we begin to spread these flowers and, and the knowledge and the inspiration that we had on the holiday of Shavuos for the rest of the year to come. We hope and pray that just like God gave us a Torah on Sinai, we are told that when Mashiach will come, there will be a new Torah, a deeper Torah, a greater Torah, even though the mitzvot will never change and the Torah is eternal, but the way we will look at Torah, the way we will understand Torah will be totally different that the Torah that we learned up till now will be Hevel Havala will be nothingness compared to the new brilliance and the new insight that all of us will attain. As the Ramam says, that the preoccupation of the entire world will be only to know God Himself. May it be speedily in our days.